Wildcats and, of course, the Gold Coast Blaze now. Yeah, I agree. I think those first three are locked in, but I think it's going to come down to a split. I think Townsville are going to make it. I really do. And uh, it's going to be a really tight contest. If both teams end up even, I believe that Townsville will get through on the points differential because they have a massive points differential, even though it's two each on the head-to-head. -head. Obviously, there's a lot of basketball to be played between now and then, but that's the long-range prediction from myself. There you go. you got to have a crack. Can't sit on the fence. And Warren off the mark on that one. Loose ball rebound goes to Dusty, but he throws it right to Liam Rush in traffic. Nice little hesitation step by Liam Rush. Liam's certainly somebody that can put points on the board pretty quickly. He was benched earlier on in the year, didn't get a lot of playing time, but has found his way into the rotation and was able to put up decent numbers for a little while, only averaging eight points a game at the moment. You see Warren on one of those curl cuts that we said he's best at. Yeah, he did not hesitate on that. Burston takes the hit from Dusty Rykar. That was always going to be tough for Burston. Running full speed to be able to grab that one, put it up soft. Let's go, boys. Dusty bailed him out a little bit. Burston shoots the basketball at 57% from the foul line on the season. Well, I'm sure his career numbers are better than that. Man. A quick look. 66. Well. This will be his sixth free throw for the night. Great effort. Only a minute into the third quarter. That one comes up short. Here comes Wilson. Wilson to Dusty. Skips it to Brad Hill. He turns a corner. His left hand shot. Good. He'll be praying that he doesn't get fouled. Truth. Imagine playing with the fear of getting fouled and not the other way around. Thinking, oh, I gotta get myself to the foul line to get myself going. Imagine the opposite of that thought. <laughs> Benny Lewis, oh, terrible shot, but it's into the shot clock. Hill picks it up, he's gotta find a teammate. It back to Dean Brevner. Jamar Wilson. Brevner's got all day to line that one up. Allen to Liam Rush. Puts it on the floor. His finger roll comes up short. First and again fouled. He'll go the line. That was a good option by the Tigers. Again, moving it over to Rush, getting to the basket. Little Euro step to the side, but came up short first in there, and now he's going to go for his eighth free throw. <laughs> well, that's a good night, getting yourself to the line eight times. Yes, it is. And again, he's only had a couple of field goal attempts. Eight free throws, four rebounds for the big fella. I always admired guys that could get, the, get to the foul line a lot. That's a skill in itself. Normally it's the guys that you know, have a pretty good scoring game and a pretty balanced game aren't just necessarily jump shooters. Normally if you're just settling for the three, you don't find a way as we see Warren get surprised by that full court pressure and Greer being able to step across. I don't know how he can argue that one. You know when you kind of catch the ball on the wrong foot to take an uncomfortable step or two or three. But that was a travel every day of the week. Rush. Rush gets into the lane. You can tell by Rush's mentality. He knows his team needs a boost from him scoring-wise. Allen pull up jump shot short. Hill showing you his size on that rebound. Dowdo with the screen. You get another look at it. He's standing there. 
Darcy. I'm not sure why Brad Hill was taking him to that side anyway. You look here, Dal Dal does a good job. It slightly in. leans across, but Brad Hill really needed to be able to come this way because that's where the angle was to be able to wipe his man off anyway. They say he stuck his arm out or something. I wish there wasn't a whole lot in it. There wasn't a lot, and he slightly leant to his right hand side, but I think because it was such contact on Greer, he went down so hard they reacted to it. Hey. A little tit for tat. <laughs> there you go, that evens out. <laughs> As Matt Burston has a seat. Got it, got it. See, the rest have done a good job of not really falling for flopping. But we can't get caught up in, you know, that sort of basketball. Let's go, let's go, Extra pass goes to Wilson. Eventually, he gobbles it up. Rush gets a piece of it. Man, man. Wilson, before the shot clock expires. Crowd giving him a clue that it was getting close. The can't. Crowd He's getting educated. We like that. Lewis wanted to shoot down. Triga. Well, they're certainly passionate, the, the Cairns fa uh, fans. Even on the way from the hotel, I was walking across, and guy chased me down to say, gee, you were harsh on the Cairns Taipans last night. I said, mate, they scored 43 points. How did you think they played? <laughs> he said, no, they were terrible. I said, we didn't say any worse than that. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Cam Traga comes up short. We had to talk about it for two hours, though. So we may have said a few comments that they didn't like. Grubo. Wilson. Shot clock in the single figures. Now Dell has it squirt off of his hands. Foul. Well, the Melbourne Tigers can talk about still being a mathematical chance of being able to make the playoffs, and if they're going to be honest with themselves after this game, they're going to understand that they have absolutely no chance of making the playoffs. But right now, they've really got to be thinking about next season as far as Trevor Gleeson and the coaching staff and looking at what players they have and really trying to make the adjustments uh, to sign the players that they want and be no doubt looking at the players that are coming off contract for other teams and adding the bits and pieces that they need to be able to build a successful club that the Melbourne Tigers are used to. Their roster is lopsided. And it has been for the last couple of years. Yeah. Too big last year. Too many swing men this year. Williams pushes off. What do you think they need for next year? Well, they need some different personalities. You know, like, you know, we're having this conversation about a couple of teams that, you know, the Adelaide 36ers, they got a lot of nice guys that, you know, good teammates and things like that. And, you know, no one that, I wouldn't say does the hard work, but, you know, has that Jason Smith nasty and, you know, go out and just do what it takes. Get on your teammates. Get up them if you have to. That's true. Yeah. Hand, hand, hand off. Get off. Wilson. A couple of heads and take. Wow. Talk about space on himself. He did it twice. He looks like he really enjoys the game. Even in the warm-ups, like we were out here a couple of hours before the game, he was smiling and enjoying himself. And you can tell he just loves being a hooper. Playing basketball for a living. And I think a lot of players can take a leap out of that booklet. It's Daniel Dillon with a nice little float bank shot. This is 
soft over the defender. I mean, pretty much that's what it comes down to, and you out there smiling and have a good time. You're playing basketball for a living. Yep, there are CEOs of companies that come out and watch the games and wish they were in a position to do that. It's Dowdle gets the jump hook to go. But can they throw a hook from the post like that, Steve? Yeah. <laughs> Can these basketball players hire and fire people? Have the power just oozing out of their business chair. Yes, I'm not sure about that. Williams. Wilson. Transition three. I love the transition three. When you got a big lead and you just want to step on the throat of your opponent, Pull up for the transition three. Well, he needs to work on his celebration as he's running back. Yeah, doesn't he? It was weak. <laughs> Is Ron Dorsey playing tonight? We had to send our floor manager last night over to town. It's our Cans bench and alert them that the game started at 7.30, but this one is well underway for them. 62 to 40 here in the third. This is the iPhone 4S. It's all new camera with eight megapixels and advanced optics. Let's you capture stunning photos. And because it's an iPhone, you can do things no ordinary camera can do. So maybe the only camera you need is the one on the most amazing iPhone yet. Welcome back. We're not going to go into the huddle right here, Shane. Uh, you want to have the beep button ready if you do. Yeah. Trevor Gleason's got to be hot. Exactly. He can pull out his notepad and call whatever players he wants. It's not going to work until the mindset changes. Yeah. Yeah, he's, he's barking some profanity right now. It's the same mindset from the Cairns Taipans last night on the road and you know obviously they've been able to turn that around within a 24-hour period and, and put in a whole lot of better performance tonight but again you need your leaders to be able to step up as we see Wilson 21 he's been outstanding tonight 11 for Grabeau off the bench Warren he's been solid with eight for Gar with 10 Myron Allen Allen Three from 11 from the field and only one assist tonight for seven rebounds with nine points and seven points for Rush, but they need to make something happen. Yeah, no doubt about that. I mean, Paul Wolford just sent a rocket as Jamar Wilson shot his scoring ways. I'm not sure who tapped that one. It looked like maybe Liam Rush did. But Paul Wolford last night, after his team was disappointing against Adelaide, just hammered his team. See, I think sometimes the imports in our league don't play with enough urgency. Yeah. I mean, when I'm playing in Europe, I mean, the, the CEOs will come up to you when your payment's due and say, we'll pay you next week if you play good. <laughs> you must score points, plenty of shoots. And believe me, you play hard. Yeah. <laughs> That's like old school parenting. You know? Parents say, you might not eat. Plus, you do your chores. Jamar Wilson slides on in. It looks like that type of night. Now, I'm not, saying that, I'm not saying that's how we should be in Australia. Don't get me wrong. But I'm saying you need to see some urgencies from your Americans. This is a great place to play. And I talk about Ron Dorsey. He's got a donut so far on the road, zero from three. He has to go and make things happen to give his team an opportunity to be able to pick one up on the road. That's his responsibility as an import in this league. Yes, sir. I would really be on your case right now if you didn't experience that over in Greece. But I'll cut you some slack on that one. Well, let's talk about Kerry Williams because he was 0 for 7 last night and he will feel very good about that trifecta going down in front of his friends and family here. Allen, as they go behind the screen.
Wilson. Little step back three. Long pass. Liam Rush. Can't gather it in. A little bumping contest with one of the smaller guards. That was like an AFL mark it would have been. Those guys so good at taking in contact and still being able to come up with the mark. And they would have gone for it. Wilson. Oh, he's having some fun out there. Williams for another three. And Wilson again comes up short. Grabo and another offensive rebound. See, have a look at the body language of the two teams right now. He loses it to Dorsey, gets it to Allen. Allen, God, that'll be a charge going the other way. Great D by Grabeau, put his body on the line, stepped across. Really read what Myron Allen was going to do with it. Not going to run through Aaron Grabeau. No. He's an athlete. He is in tremendous shape. He might have a shoulder injury here and there, but every year he is fit. Oh, and that's why he's in the league, Steve, because he's not the most talented player in the league, but he's had longevity because he's been a good teammate, good clubman, plays his role, plays extremely hard all the time. And those sort of guys, when we talk about, you know, what does Adelaide need? He's the sort of player that would play well for Adelaide right now. Yeah. He's not as talented as some of the guys they've got. Jamar Wilson.